showed you, it is raining miserably out there today. Ah, there's nothing wrong with that. I like the rain. It just means I can't uh, go out and film adventures for you guys. The gear does not like rain. So instead, I want to do a little mini channel update, tell you guys what's coming up this weekend. I've got four videos for you guys. I've been out adventuring like crazy. And uh, basically, it took me Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, six hours each day editing to make the four videos. So I hope you guys appreciate this weekend's work. I've got uh, two videos coming up here on Unfrequented World. I went to the local, uh, I call it local, it's 40 minutes away, Provincial Park. One of about five that we have within an hour and a half's drive of here because we are in an area that a lot of you guys don't understand. You hear of Algonquin Park, which is a famous park. Um, that's, again, only 25, 30 minutes from here, right? People travel all over the world to come here and see Algonquin Park, but all of the bush around here, north, south, east, west, it's all Algonquin Park. Whether it's actually saved land or not, it's the same, it's the same land. And that's where I'm taking you guys adventuring all the time. So just north of Algonquin Park is Champlain, Samuel de Champlain uh, Provincial Park, where you can go with trailers and tents and camp. So I've got that uh, series coming up this weekend here on Unfrequented World. Two videos. Uh, I called it Champlain Exposé 1 and 2. And we did it with my good friend, Jen, uh, the Wild Yam. So she has a channel that we feature here many times. Her and I hang out once or twice a summer. You guys have seen her videos if you're familiar with my channel for any amount of time, you will know Jen, she is awesome. We are both biologists, scientists now, but she's you can't take the scientist out of her. You can't take a walk with Jen. She's pointing out every little bug, every little mushroom. Fantastic videos, two of those on this channel. Over on Bigfooter Gary, link in the description, I've got two videos coming up there. Uh, Jen and I went out into the bush and we did an evening session with Necrophonic, okay? So we hiked some trails that were behind the campground that go around the lake. Um, we did find some critters. We did. We got some amazing responses. That video is coming up this weekend on Bigfooter Gary. And then the second video that I have coming up there is another story, uh, a viewer account. Okay, so both of those over on Bigfooter Gary. Um, stay tuned right here, and I'll just show you guys what I've been doing the last couple of days. I've been feeling inspired. I bought this group of seven painting uh, book. Well, it's it's a book on the group of seven who are famous Canadian artists, and it's full of their paintings. And I've been inspired to uh, pick up the brushes. So I'll just show you that first little. Don't laugh, guys. The first painting's terrible. You got to remember, I'm not going for realistic. The kids were like, "This looks like a five-year-old drew this," and I'm like, "Yeah, I know. That's the whole point, right? I'm trying to release my inner child." So check that out uh, right here and stay tuned this weekend, guys. Great adventures coming up on both channels. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I just packed a bag of all kinds of art supplies and I was gonna hike back into the bush. I've got a spot in my head that I wanna go and I'm feeling super inspired by this group of seven book that I picked up when I was in Champlain Park. And we went down to the store and I always, if you guys watch the channel know that I like to support the local uh, little stores and whatever they run in the parks and this group of seven book look at look at it has all the most beautiful group of seven paintings in here last week uh, the group of seven are famous turn of the century northern Ontario artists there were actually nine of them and then later on I think they ended with 11 and one had died so I think there were 12 okay but they were called the group of seven and uh, they have some amazing very simplistic uh, landscapes, mostly landscapes, um, fantastic stuff, and it's inspired me. And so I've been doing some research. I actually went to art school years ago, guys. I, um, I went to school for graphic design. Uh, I was a painter before I went to that school, and it kind of beat all of the artisticness out of me because everything was commercial. And I didn't want to do commercial work. And so I actually have a diploma from the college. I did two years of illustration, two years of photography, uh, basically all kinds of, of art, you know, history and all, a, all that stuff. And I got out of it for 20 some years. Uh, when I started the photography course, I began a new passion. It was the passion of instant gratification, which is photography. And to this day, it is still one of my passions. 
However, now in my mid 40s, I want to get back into it. And uh, instead of going, you know, a couple miles back in the bush here, I found the first scene uh, right here. I took a picture of it with the phone. I just want to paint something simple. Uh, so painting in the yard will actually have benefits. Ha! My camping chairs. I'm going to set up in a chair right here in the yard for my first work and uh, use... I actually threw my back out. A guy came to buy a table. We're redoing my daughter's bedroom. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, my back hurts. <laughs> so to go back there and uh, I don't know, was I planning on kneeling? I don't know, I don't have uh, an easel. So uh, I'd basically be holding my little canvas. I've just got one canvas on me and uh, this is gonna help. I'm just gonna use the chair and we're gonna do this scene right here in the yard. Okay, so I actually forgot my palette. If I had gone back in the bush, I wouldn't uh, have been able to paint anyway. I'll show you guys what I what I packed in here. I only packed one canvas. And then these oh, I these were the only brushes I had that the kids didn't uh, use and leave paint on. So there's four of those, not much option there. But then I did find all of the acrylic paints that I've bought them over the last few years. Now, if I can't find enough colors in there, <laughs> so wish me luck. It's exercises like these that remind me why I like photography. <laughs> I don't have the patience for this. So the old Gary really would have cared what other people thought. But I've sat here for an hour and I've had fun. You know, I can look at it like I've wasted a kid's canvas or I could say, I had fun. <laughs> there is my hammock in the backyard. I got 96 out of 100 on, uh, you know, realistic illustration. And I've always wanted to be an impressionist kind of no rules, you know, create this nonsense. And I can't because I don't free myself enough. I'm like, oh, we need to use a fine, fine brush. No, I want to take a big brush and I want to just whack it all over the place and see what happens. And that's what I'm going to do in the next little bit. It's just have fun like I was a little kid again. There are no rules. I forget everything you've been taught. Just have fun and create.